In this video, we're gonna go over the importance of calculation in chess and why you have to get your calculation skills as sharp as you possibly can. In this video, I'm playing against a 2,000 plus player. And uh, here we have the Sicilian defense. And in this position, after bishop b4, um, we want to play bishop d2 is the main line. There's also bishop d3, which is probably your safest bet. Uh, bishop d2 is uh, playable because you don't get the pawn after here because queen g4 balances out the position. You have to play this anyway, and white grabs the pawn back. So here I made a mistake. I was just played bishop e2. I'm not, you know, I know that's a mistake. I wouldn't play that in a slow game, but I just played bishop e2 by accident thinking that I'd have counterplay, but I really don't. Uh, you just drop a piece. So if you're gonna take away something from this video, uh, something else from this video, don't play bishop e2 in this Sicilian in this variation of the Sicilian defense. So my opponent just simply wins a pawn here. And then this pawn is weak, so I don't wanna spend time defending it. So here I just castled away and gave it away, and he just grabbed that pawn. The problem is he's forking my, kind of like a fork. He's attacking my bishop and queen, so when I move my queen away, he's going to take the bishop and now, you know, get rid of my bishop pair, which was only, you know, somewhat of an advantage I had. And now I have nothing. I'm just down two pawns for no reason. So I horribly misplayed the opening. So first of all, don't misplay your openings and try to know as many openings as you can. And if you have to take your time, take your time. In this case, I knew what to play. I knew how to play it. I'm not so, so familiar with it, but I just didn't take my time in the opening. I just played a move and it was a disaster. So my opponent castles, he's a strong player, he's, you know, he's gonna probably, probably uh, just take advantage of this, right, being up two pawns. He moves his rook out of the way, I develop all my pieces. The least thing I, the least I can do is still play accurate chess. So notice how, how when I'm down, when I'm losing a game, I don't just go crazy, I just play, try to play the best moves. I castle, my king is safe, all my pieces are developed, and we'll go from there. My opponent plays a great central move here, just, D5. His, both his pawns are in the center. Not only that, he, since he's up two pawns, and the two pawns he's up are basically, I, I mean, I have no pawns in the center, so he's just totally dominating the center. All these squares are just controlled, and this is a, this is a winning game already. But we have to get, we have to try to fight back, right? So there's a lot of room for improvement in chess. There's always a lot of game to be played. And, you know, we're not playing computers. I don't care what rating you see, 2000's high. Sure, it's a high rating. It's expert level chess. But, you know what? He's not a 3700 computer. That doesn't make any mistakes. So we always play on. We always try to get back in the game. All right. Anyway, so right here, I'm just attacking a pawn. So my opponent actually just, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't play queen f3 first. I played rookie one. Then after this, I played queen f3. So now I'm attacking the pawn here, sort of. I think he can just still play bishop, play bishop e4, which he can. So that doesn't look good because it looks like we have a pin, but not really because he would just simply you know, be up material there. Uh, he didn't play that, though. He played bishop e6. I improved my knight, and he attacks my queen. Now, you'll notice that my rook is lined up with his queen. That's not a mistake. That's not by accident, that's by design. And you'll notice this pawn is pinned, so you'd think I could take it, which is what I did. But again, I was not having a good day in chess today, and this is not a good move. So this is where calculation comes into play. And I just briefly saw, okay, yeah, knight, he takes my knight, he can't take because I'll take his queen. And even if he does take my queen, all I get is rook, but, but if you think about it, no, it, nothing happens. So basically, he just takes my knight and attacks my queen. So it doesn't matter that I'm taking his queen because he's taking my queen. And then if I take his rook, he just takes back. So he's just simply up material. Yeah, I do get the pawn at the end, but now these are two double isolated pawns going into an end game. He has an extra piece. He's going to just win that back. And then some, it's a completely winning game. So I didn't see that. And my opponent missed it too. And he played knight e5. Now, he's a very strong player, so he's thinking like, okay, he's attacking the knight still and attacking the queen. Now, how can that go wrong? Well, it's completely wrong because now I move my queen off this f3 square, which is why the pin doesn't work because he would take the knight and attack my queen. 
So not only do I do that, but I move it out of the way and attack a loose piece. So now he has to play very accurately to stay. He has to play, he has to find a move like bishop g4, which is not really easy, easy to find, but he actually just played queen c3, uh, c7, excuse me, which looks reasonable, but it's completely unreasonable move. Now, you might think, well, yeah, I could just move the knight somewhere and I'm attacking this knight twice and the queen's pinned. Um, so if he, in other words, if he moves out of the way, I would just take his queen. But he does have f6 here. So that would be a problem. And if I play f4 and I make him move the knight, now my own pawn is blocking my queen. So, and now if I do this, trying to attack it, now he just comes back. So um, actually, you can't do that. I'm sorry. If I attack it, I'm attacking his bishop and the queen, but he can trade queens first and then just take this. That would be ridiculous. So for that reason, um, I found a much better move here. And it's not a hard move to find, but my opponent fell for it because, again, he's a good player and he calculated, he can calculate deep, but he just missed something, you know, seemingly small that's easy to miss, but it's very important in this variation to calculate, and he missed it. But try to find the winning move here, and it, I know it kind of might look easy at first, but then kind of look a little further and see why you think my opponent missed this. And see if you can spot what to play. So here, um, okay, I just played bishop d6. Now, some of you that are pretty good are like, oh yeah, that's kind of obvious. I mean, you're attacking you know, the queen and the knight. Um, if he takes the knight, you, you win the queen, so that's good. And if he moves the knight, you, you just win the queen, right? So that looks good. Well, my opponent saw this. I can't say for certain, but I'm assuming he saw this. He just took a pawn. Now you can say, well, why would he, on earth would he do such a thing? Well, because I take the knight. And after that, he's like, oh, well, I can take a knight too. And I just grabbed another pawn, so I'm actually winning. In fact, you know, if I don't see the move here, I mean, he's, he's yeah, he's doing, he's doing all right for himself. But he still gave up a piece. I guess that was the best, best way he could do it, I guess. But, you know, he uh, fell for... He didn't, what he didn't see in his you know, calculation was after I take here, he can't take the knight because I'm actually threatening checkmate. So for that, you know, it's something easy to miss when you're calculating, but obviously it's super important because it's checkmate. And even if he did see this you know, last minute and go, oh, no, I can't take the knight and tried to block or something, well, he's pinned, his, his, this pawn is pinned you know, by my queen so I can throw in this check and then take. Okay, and you can't even take back because we have checkmate. So again, that's just some key things in calculation. When you're calculating, you really want to be precise. You really want to make sure that you're not missing anything. And you know, the small things can make all the difference in calculation down the line. So if you do go into those force variations, always make sure that you're seeing every little nuance or try to. I know it's hard, but there's only one way to calculate in chess and get better at it, and that's by doing a lot of tactics puzzles and spotting these tactics when you're playing real games. Anyway, hope that video was helpful. Get out of here, go play some chess.